So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm back. It's been a while since the last time I was here. Uh, let me send you the PDF first. And I'll send it to myself. The midterm, you have other three questions like the last midterm. I have no idea. Let me check. I actually don't know. Give me a moment. So now let me check your midterm. Anyone finished the midterm already? No, you have four questions. Yeah, four questions. The professor said it's on unit 15.9 to 16.3. Does this mean there are no questions on um, 15.7 to 15.8? Hmm. Okay, the, I need to check the questions as well. <sighs> okay. This looks like what we're doing today. And this also looks like what we're doing today. <laughs> Question three. Oh. I think question, I think this one is 16.3, yeah. So 16.2, 16.3, and let's look at this one. Yeah, no, no cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Let me check again 15.7 and 8 yeah yeah no 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 those two sessions 7 8 wait 9 is triple integral and spherical coordinates but yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so 9 to 15 Oh, nine is change of variables, is it? Let me see. Don't have a textbook. Okay, so change of variables till the fundamental theorem of line integral. Yep. Yeah. Oh wow, only twelve students did the midterm so far. Let me check. Yeah. Of students. Anyway, uh, today we're going. Today we're going to do line integrals, which is sixteen point two. And I just realized your midterm is really similar to what we're doing today. <laughs> I mean, the question is really similar, but that's okay. Okay, let me make sure it's not identical. Uh, hold on. Let me check. If it's identical, then... Well, I can't tell you anyway. Just let me have a look. Hmm. 
Oh, if I tell you it's identical, then you know it's the meter question already. Now we're good. We're good. Okay. So cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's really similar. Anyway, my integrals. Let's start. So basically, before we're... Oh, yeah, anyway. If f is a function defined on a smooth curve c given by the parametric equation, which looks like this, okay? So x is a function of t, y is a function of t, then the line integral of f along c is given by this, which I guess nobody cares. Uh, this is the one you do care about because this is the formula that you use to calculate line integral. Uh, well, it's just plug in the formula. So the actual, I wouldn't say hard part, but uh, if you don't remember 232, then you should review uh, how to parameterize uh, of equation, okay? So if they give you something that's y equals to something, a function of x, then you should know how to parameterize it such that x is a function of t and y is a function of t. So uh, that's something, if you don't remember, you should review. And let's look at example one. So I want you to evaluate the line integral where c is a given curve. And uh, this is the integral you need to evaluate. And c is a line segment from 0, 3 to 4, 6. As always, I'll give you some time to work on this. And we'll take it up after you guys are done. Should be really simple, as long as you know how to parameterize the line. Oh, you heard Bonnie? 
Yeah, Ronnie was talking. Okay, I'm done writing, so we'll take it up. Basically, uh, I drew out our line segment C, which is from 0, 3 to 4, 6, then I parametrize it. So X is 4T, Y is 3 plus 3T, where T is from 0 to 1. So using this formula, we can tell that uh, the integral x sine y over c is going to be from 0 to 1 and then f x t y t so f of x is x sine y so f of x t y t is going to be 4t times sine of 3 plus 3t and then take the square root of dx dt which is 4 square plus dy dt which is 3 okay so this whole thing is uh, 16 plus 9, 25, so that's 5. 5 times 4 is 20, so we take it out. And then we just need to uh, integrate this. And then we just use integration by parts. Uh, today, what I'm doing in the question general is we need to use multi integration by parts multiple times. So uh, be, pre be prepared for that. Any question for this example? Are we good? Good? Okay, cool. So if we're good, let's look at line integral with respect to x and y. Um, what, what, what I was going to say. Yeah, with respect to x and y. So before we have ds, now you have dx or dy. So for dx, with respect to x, you just multiply by x prime of t instead of square root of this. So instead of the distance function, right? Um, and for dy, you just multiply by y prime of t instead of the square root. So it should be pretty simple. Mm. And I'll give you some time to work on example two.
Okay, again, I finished writing, so let's take it up. <clears throat> um, again, we have a line segment, so my first step is I draw out the line segment, and notice that this is my C, so uh, it's not clearly not like just one function, so I split it into C1 and C2. So my C1 is x equals to t, y equals to 1 over 2t, where t is from 0 to 2. And my C2 is x equals to t, y equals to 3 minus t, and my t is from 2 to 3. So basically, I just need to do them separately and add them together. Uh, yeah. And um, so we have t plus 2y, t is t. So x plus 2y, x is t plus 2 times y, which is 1 over 2t times d times x prime of t, which is 1, so times 1, plus and we have uh, x squared, x squared, which is, wait, where am I? I'm lost. Yeah, here I'm losing 1 squared. So here we have x squared, which is t squared times uh, the derivative of y. So that's 1 over 2. So times 1 over 2. And the whole thing dt, that's uh, c1. And then c2, we have x plus 2y, x is t. 2y is 2 times 3 minus t times the x over dt, which is 1. And then x squared, which is t squared times the y over dt is negative 1, so times negative 1. And you just need to take the interval of both sides, and eventually you'll get 5 over 2. Uh, this should be clear enough as well. Any question? Question? So the third one is line integral in space. Mm, line integral in space, yeah. So uh, it's basically the same as before, except you have another uh, axis, which is z. But everything else is the same, except you're adding z everywhere. So we have f of x, y, z equals to from a to, uh, to b, x, I mean, f of x t, y of t, z of t, and square root of the whole thing. So it's really similar. That's why I'm not doing any question on this. Uh, really similar as before. And also, uh, for later, we have a question that involves three. Well, right here, we have three core. I mean, three axes already. So uh, I'm not doing question. I'm mean, not doing any examples on this separately. But the next one, we have line integral in vector fields. So if f is a continuous vector field defined on a smooth curve c, given by the vector function r of t, where t is between a and b, then the line integral of f along c is defined as below. So the line integral of f along c so fdr is from a to b f of rt dot product r prime t which equals to this and if your f is pi plus qj plus rk then you can compute the line integral using this way okay so it's pretty simple uh now let's Try example three. Again, I'll give you some time to work on this. And I'll take it up. This should be pretty straightforward as well. Everything is pretty straightforward. Do I happen to have a pass test? <laughs> Let me check. Not sure yet, but I'll check. I'm not sure how similar it is going to be. I mean, I, ha I had a look at your term test. It looks really similar to the textbook questions. So I think that should be a really good review already. Spherical coordinates evaluated. 
yeah you just need to do the textbook questions basically and i'm doing some of the textbook questions so what left for you is pretty not there is not much questions for left for you to do right yeah the the term test i have is really different from your test because they test on different material i mean this one you can do but Do you know what unit this course goes up to? to? I have no idea. It really depends on your professor. Because I know uh, for this course, some professors goes up to, like some professors finished the whole book and they go on to, differential forms, which is not even in the book. Some professors just finish the, the book and they stop there. And some professors, they didn't even have time to finish the book. So I really don't know. I think your professor is probably just gonna stick with the book because that's what she's doing, right? She's been doing. Strictly follow the book. So as long as you practice from a textbook, I think you are good. Yeah, I think she's strictly following James Stewart calculus, so. The other book, I haven't even opened it yet. Don't think it's that important. I think she uh, uses the other book because it's like open resources online where uh, your textbook, you need to pay for it, right? Although everyone knows how to get the free PDF, but it's not technically free. So she's thinking that, well, she's giving you another free textbook that you can use. Hopefully by now, no one's paying for the textbook. At least for the ebook, hopefully no one's paying for it. Hopefully everyone knows where to find uh, ebook. Hopefully. Because I know some first year students are still buying all the textbooks, uh, including the ebook. So yeah, I mean I mean the, the the PDF. I have a physical copy, but I didn't buy it. I mean, I prefer a physical copy as well because sometimes it's just focus more when you have a physical copy, but I wouldn't spend money on it, you know? I mean, when I TA for courses, I can get a free physical copy. So I don't need to, <laughs> don't need to buy it. When I was a student, I just used a PDF. Like I'm TA in 244 and I got a free copy physical copy from the professor. They just mail it to me. So technically, I can get a second copy this semester because I'm TA in 244 again, but I was like, ah, never mind. Yeah, I don't like that course either. It's like the worst course ever. <laughs>
her homework is ridiculously long. Ah, Natalia. Oh, actually, this semester it's much shorter than before. I heard. I know that before. Yeah. I mean, not much shorter than last semester, but much shorter than the one when Natalia was teaching before. Not, yeah. Natalia, when, when she was teaching, and over last year when she was teaching, the assignments were so long because I heard, because I know some of the 244 TA, and they were like, from, from last year, and they were like, oh, someone bought a really thin notebook and they submit the whole notebook as your assignment because that's how long it was and i was like wow i feel so bad for you guys so this semester it's really short for the reason that when we so at the at the beginning of the semester when we were having this ta meeting and uh and we're discussing about who's gonna grade what question right so i was like oh so since there are three tas let's each grade one question and <laughs> i was like well if the professor agrees that they are only gonna put three questions on each assignment we can't do this right so uh because i said that so there are only three questions for each of the assignment which is not bad I, I didn't pick the first question. You should should have said two questions last semester. Well, I said three questions last semester too. Basically, uh, last semester it was me and Mjet. He has one tutorial. I had two tutorials, so I need to grade double amount of what he's doing. So uh, I was like, okay, so uh, he's always gonna grade question one and now grade the rest, right? So I said that. And I expected the professor only gave you guys three questions because so that's that so that I'm doing like double amount of what he's doing. But later in the course, he's giving you like six questions. And I was like, uh, OK, <laughs> it was like, well, OK, didn't you didn't you agree that you only give them three questions at the beginning of the semester? Because like I told MJ, he's going to grade the first question and I'll grade the rest. So if, if he gave you five questions, then he's grading the first one. I'm grading four questions. That's like four times the work of what he's doing. And I was like, ah, OK, <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> Yeah, but right now Natalia is a coordinator and she only gave some three questions per assignment, which is good. Oh, okay, back to back to this course. Okay, back to this course. Evaluate this, blah blah blah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use this formula. So I'm gonna write F in terms of F of R T. So let's write F of R T. equals to t squared plus t cube i plus t cube minus t square j plus t square square k and then our prime of t is just 2 t i plus 3 t square j plus 2 t k now let's compute the integral. Zero to one, f of r t, r prime t, d t. So that's gonna be two t q plus two t to the power of four plus 3t to the power of 5 minus 3t to the power of 4 plus 2t to the power of 5 dt and then you just integrate this so 0 to 1 5t to the power of 5 minus t to the power of 4 plus 2t to the power of 3 dt which equals to 5 over 6t to the power of 6 minus 1 over 5 t to the power of 5 plus 
1 over 2 t to the power of 4 from 0 to 1. So this is going to give you 5 over 6 plus minus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 2. And that's 17 over 15. Okay, cool. Seems like you guys are chatting with each other. That means you have no question. Okay, let's do four and five. I definitely need more space for four. Okay, a uh, four is a lot of computation. So I guess I'll skip the intermediate step and give you the final answer once you are done. Because, well, they ask for mass and center of mass, and you know it's really a lot of computation. And a lot of integration by parts. But make sure you know how to do this question. I think that's a big hint. <laughs> See what you guys are doing. See us. Oh, I didn't know for a CS students you need to do this course. Oh, you are also math major. Okay. Gonna drop three sixteen. For seven hours, wow, okay. How can you even focus for seven hours? I feel like I can barely focus for one hour. Dress. And coffee. Yeah, coffee works, but it, coffee is like not making you focus though. It's just make, Make sure you're awake. Uh, okay, I like coffee. Actually, caffeine doesn't really work on me. I drink it for the taste. <laughs> I, I can drink black coffee. So for me, I either drink black coffee or anything like no sugar, no milk. So it's like Americano, yeah, black coffee, Americano, those are, or I, or I add milk only. So just coffee with milk or what else? Or I like, I like, oh, my favorite is cappuccino with whipped cream on top. It's so good. Cappuccino with whipped cream on top, I highly recommend it. It's so good. Ice cups? Oh, I don't drink ice cups. I feel like it's too, 
too sweet for me. Well, oh no, I think that's too sweet, but occasionally I drink, occasionally I drink a uh, caramel macchiato, which is really sweet, but sometimes, you know, sometimes, probably like once a month, I drink that. Just need something really sweet and I drink that. But other times I only drink black coffee or with milk only. Never try it, Red Bull. Don't don't try it. It's not good for you. Two coffees. I usually I only drink one cup of coffee per day, except during exam period. Exam period like long time ago for me. I mean, I mean, like not the last year or the second last year. Like when I was in second year during the exam period, I drink a lot of coffee, like five cups of cappuccino, which is really bad. But yeah, but after that, I don't drink more than one cup of coffee anymore. Right now, it's just like one cup of coffee and one cup of tea. Yeah. Anyway, back to back to this course, because uh, we do need to finish this to help you on your midterm. Uh, let's see. So the S for mass and center of mass. Let's recall. Recall. So how do you calculate mass? Mass equals to the integral of the density mm. function. So in this question is x, y, z, ds, and it's over c, along c. And center of mass is x bar. Rami, what's wrong? Center of mass is x bar, y bar, and z bar. So x bar equals to 1 over m. So you need to calculate your mass first, okay? One over m, the integral around c, and the density function, and times x. So x times the density function, and then ds. And y bar is the same, except you change x to y. And z bar, as you change y to z. So make sure you remember this. So for this question, our density function is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So my mass is x squared plus y squared plus z squared ds, which is 0 to 2 pi. And then x is t, so t squared plus cosine t squared plus sine t squared. And then square root of 1 squared plus y dy dt is negative sine square and then dz dt is cosine t square dt so this will give you so you can see that this becomes one this is one as well so let's simplify it a lot zero to two pi and then we have square root of two times t squared plus one dt, okay? We don't have time. I don't have time to finish all the computations. I'll give you the final answer. 
pretty sure you can do the integral yourself. Square root of two times eight pi to the power of three over three plus two pi. So that's my mass, and x bar is, oops, one over m. So one over, one over this. So this, and the integral from zero to two pi and then I want to multiply by x. So my x is t, and this is my, I mean, this is my density function. So it's going to be square root of 2 times t to the 3 plus t, dt. Okay? And thus, the final answer will be 3 pi times 2 pi squared plus 1 over 4 pi squared plus 3. Well, I'm pretty sure you all know how to compute this. So, and the y bar is, again, we have 1 over m. And then integral 0 to 2 pi. And y is cosine t. So square root of two and then cosine t, t squared plus one. So for this integral, you need to use integration by parts twice. And eventually the answer should be 12 over six plus eight pi squared. And that bar is, again, we have similar thing except you change y to z. So y to z, change this to sine t. Again, you need to use integration by parts twice. And this will give you negative 12 pi over 6 plus 8 pi square. OK, so that's example 4. And example 5. It's really short, but I'll give you, it's 57 now, I'll give you uh, two, it's 58 already. So I'll give you two minutes to think about it and I'll take it up directly, okay? And make sure you know how to do this question as well.
Wait, what? It's on the looping of record. It's not on the looping of record. I'm not watching anything. Is it good now? Okay, cool. So uh, this question, let me quickly take it off. This is pretty simple. Uh, the only thing that you need to know um, is that work done by the force field is going to be the integral of this. Okay, so your f of x, y is this, and uh, uh, particle that moves along the parabola, so this is your r of t. Um, so you need to parametrize this. I used y as my parameter. So then I have x equals to y squared plus 1, y equals to y, y is between 0 and 1. And then you just compute it. So uh, the integral of this is going to be the dot product of f and dr. So f is this, right? So x squared, x is this, so x squared, and the y e to the power of x. y is y e to the power of x e to the power of x this this is x so that's f and dr is derivative of this so that's 2y and derivative of this is 1 okay so the doctor product of those two uh, if you don't remember how to compute this then you will have this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this right so you have this and take the integral of this you will get this it's pretty simple and straightforward. Is there any question? Well, there are other ways to do it, but I think this is the easiest way. Um, definitely there are other ways to do it, okay? Cool, uh, I think you're good. Yeah, make sure you study for the next session. I don't have time to cover the next session, which is, Fundamental theory of line integral. Make sure you study for that before you do your midterm. Other than that, it should be good. Okay, I'll see you guys next week.